Uh, 9-11 uh, was a traumatic moment for the United States, but also there was great solidarity between Europe and the United States and an outpouring of support and affection. Obviously, what changed was the Iraq War and the way the United States went to that war. And really, because the war has not gone well, it's been chastening for uh, this administration and for Americans in general, I think, so that there's uh, been a possibility of a convergence. The reality is that the world is safer and more prosperous when Europe and America work together as global partners. I've always believed that when America and the EU work together, we can accomplish big deeds. And this world needs us to work together because there's a lot of challenges. Thomas Jefferson is remembered for drafting the American Declaration of Independence in 1776, declaring the separation of this colony from British rule and Europe. Over two centuries later, Washington DC is the nation's capital. Her monuments and buildings are recognizable around the world as symbols of leadership, representations of the superpower this nation has become. But in these two centuries, transatlantic bridges have been built. The most powerful of these currently is the partnership between the United States and the European Union. It's an important year for the two powers. In 2007, the European Union celebrates 50 years in existence with unprecedented peace on the continent. And it now matches the US as an economic power. The US is in its fifth year in Iraq and other significant challenges lay ahead for the administration on issues such as climate change and Iran. The face of Europe in Washington is EU ambassador to the United States John Bruton, a man highly qualified for the role. Former Taoiseach or Prime Minister of Ireland, John Bruton was deeply involved in the Northern Ireland peace process and in Washington his political background is a distinct advantage. The Hill likes to talk the language of politics with people who can talk it well and he can. But to do that well you need I think that easy familiarity uh, with people in power. It's very important to build up a good relationship with members of Congress because administrations come and go, presidents come and go, but members of Congress tend to last quite a long time. So ensuring that every member of Congress knows about the EU, recognizes that the EU is a potential partner for him or her in their work. Going to visit uh, your state very soon. You are. John Bruton has emphasized this aspect of his job as it puts European issues directly in front of policymakers. One such issue is that of travel visa arrangements. Currently, Americans can travel to all 27 member states of the EU without a visa. However, 12 of the EU 27 do not enjoy the same privileges in return and they feel unfairly treated. We agree with them. We feel that there should be a single approach being taken by the United States to the European Union because in, not only do we uh, offer Americans visa-free access to us, we also, as the European Union, cooperate with them on extradition of people who might be suspected terrorists. We cooperate with them on exchange of intelligence and information about travellers who might be risky travellers. And we're lobbying Congress on that. And we're making some progress on this. Here is a piece of legislation. I always tell people what you I think there's going to have to be European-American political cooperation on a number of issues uh, that are looming. And Europe exercises influence in places where the United States does not, quite clearly. Iran is surrounded by nuclear powers. We Europeans recognize, and increasingly I think the US administration recognizes, that Europe and America together can put together a package that would persuade the Iranians to abandon the nuclear course. The European Union in the Middle East is the entity that's keeping the Palestinian people alive at the present time. Now, if one wants to have peace between Israel and Palestine, if one wants to have two states living at peace in the same area, there's got to be two states that can do a deal with one another. Politicians on the Hill are not the EU's only audience in the United States. Explaining the basics of what the EU is to the American public and how the EU is good for the US is still a fundamental part of the job. Where we do face a challenge is in explaining where Europe is different in the way it approaches major issues. The solidarity we have with new member states, but also the solidarity we show uh, in, our, in, our, in our grants to developing countries. We're now responsible for 
uh, of all uh, grant aid, and that's a big surprise to most Americans. To talk to most Americans means a relentless schedule traveling for John Bruton. This week, he meets business interests and students in Indiana, home of Notre Dame University and the Fighting Irish. My country, Ireland, would never have transformed itself if it wasn't for the access to this huge market that the European Union has given us. So joining the European Union is a very attractive thing economically. But we're using the economic attraction to achieve a political goal. And that political goal is human rights, democracy, the rule of law, and an end to conflict. A lot of the things we're doing together, like having a single market, like protecting human rights, are the same as what the United States is doing together. So we are natural partners. So it's more than just a sort of an economic pact. It's more than just an alliance. This is a union of values. And what we're doing... It's clear that the economic pact, the bilateral trade, is an important binding factor for the two. Two out of every three dollars invested in the United States from outside comes from Europe. And US companies make five times more profits from their investments in the Netherlands alone than they do in all of China. But the EU and the US have agreed to make the global economy more inclusive for other countries. Although the current world trade talks have stalled, the EU is convinced that there is a deal to be salvaged and a global imperative to do so. Global warming has been another sticking point in the US and a serious cause of concern for the Europeans. And we know that we Europeans and Americans are more responsible for this than anyone else because it's mostly our greenhouse gas that's up there. We Europeans and Americans must lead by example and we must do it now. And the European Union is saying we'll cut our greenhouse gases to 20% below their 1990 level by 2020. And we're saying to the Americans, will you commit to do something similar? But we have relatively little time to get to that point. Working through these issues requires an ongoing transatlantic conversation. For the EU ambassador, addressing students is an opportunity to talk to tomorrow's decision makers. Your generation has a choice. Are we going to use our power to ensure that everybody gets the same chance that we now have to live in freedom and to live in a world at peace? We, Europeans and Americans, working together, can do more than almost any people could have done at any time in the past history to achieve that objective for the next 25 to 30 years. And it's important that we understand one another, we understand the opportunity and work to take it, to grasp it, and to give the sort of leadership that the world needs at this time. Thank you.